Hey there! In this video, I'm going to be experimenting with using watercolor on regular paper. So I'm starting with cardstock and watercolor paper. I put them side by side, and starting with this Strathmore watercolor paper, I'm going to paint some basic circle shapes. And I'm just going to get a feel for how the paint and the water behave on the different papers. So again, this is watercolor paper. It's made for absorbing paint and water. So I'm just starting off with that. And then I'm going to move on to the paper on the right side, which is a 80 pound cardstock paper. And as I was painting, what I noticed right away was how much smoother it was. Now this is like a smooth finished cardstock. Compared to the cold press watercolor paper on the left side there, it's much smoother. But as you can see, the, the paint and water are actually looking pretty good on this cardstock. Um, I was actually pretty impressed with how well it worked. I'm not sure if I've used watercolor on cardstock before, but I was pretty impressed. So I'm going to set that aside to dry and try printer paper now. So this is 20 pound copy paper and it's, you know, it's flimsy, it's just basic printer paper. So I'm going to paint the same thing on here and one of the first things I noticed that you probably noticed too is how the paper wrinkles up and then the paint and water kind of puddles up in those wrinkles. So that's definitely very noticeable. And what I also noticed as I was painting was how the, the paint would kind of soak right down into the paper and then it was hard to blend it back out after that. So now I'm just going to experiment with some basic watercolor techniques on these papers. Again, this is the cardstock. So I'm doing a basic gradient wash and then doing the same thing on the watercolor paper on the left hand side and then here's the printer paper so I'm doing the same thing on these three papers just to compare them you can definitely see a difference in how the water and paint is behaving on the printer paper so now I'm using a very pigmented Payne's gray color to just experiment a little bit more with how the pigment and the water blend together on the different papers. Now I'm just painting some basic leaves Again, just experimenting, seeing what it's like painting on normal paper versus watercolor paper. And what I also did here was I lifted color. You can see I'm lifting color on those leaves. And that is something that watercolor paper works well for, is lifting paint, lifting color off of your paper after you've put it down. It's really handy for adding highlights or lightening areas when you're painting. So I'm going to test that too. Here on the cardstock you can see lifting color kind of works, not as well. So what I'm definitely noticing here is that the thicker the paper, the better. Here I tried to lift color. You can see it didn't work on the printer paper. Then I'm just adding some stripes of paint. I was actually kind of surprised at how much I enjoyed painting on this cardstock. I didn't expect it to work as well as it did. So if you don't have watercolor paper, uh, cardstock is actually a pretty good substitute. 
So now, just for comparison, I also did these same little swatches on Arches watercolor paper. And Arches is a 100% cotton paper, so it's, it's artist grade, it's higher quality, and the paint just works so much better on 100% cotton paper. So I just had to add that in here so that you can see the difference. Um, and one of the biggest differences is how textured it is, as you can see. It has more texture than any of the other papers that I've shown here. And because it is so absorbent, you also have to use a lot more water with your paint. So I just, I did the same things here, minus the leaves, which I forgot to do. And here it is dry. Again, you can see that texture. You can see how smooth those blends are. Um, so that's artist grade watercolor paper. And then this is the Strathmore watercolor paper, which is more of a student grade. It's less expensive. And the blends are just a little bit less nice on there. This is the cardstock now. Everything's dried and you can see how the paint and the blends ended up drying. Here is the printer paper. Again, wrinkly, the blends. The paint kind of just puddles up and sits there on the printer paper. The paint also bleeds through on printer paper, so that's definitely a downside. It's also just going to be harder to preserve artwork on the printer paper. There was no bleed through on the cardstock paper, which is good. That was thick enough. Here's the printer paper versus the Strathmore watercolor paper. And then here it is compared to the Arches paper. You can definitely see a difference there. Now, watercolor paper will warp and wrinkle to some degree. It definitely will, but that can be fixed. So here are the circle paintings. There's the cardstock and the watercolor paper. You can see it's wrinkled some. I was actually testing to see if the chalky paint was rubbing off on my finger. It didn't, but it felt like it was. Here's the printer paper versus the watercolor paper. Again, those blends just, they just look bad on the printer paper. And it bled through. Um, so yeah, cardstock is definitely the best normal paper that I tried. And I also tried using this kids art paper pad. I painted a swatch of paint on there, checked for bleed through. There was no bleed through. Um, it's slightly thicker than printer paper, so it worked a little bit better, but the paper gets all soggy with wetness. I also wanted to show you craft paper, and this is just really basic craft paper. But you can see I painted a little bit of watercolor on this craft paper, and it worked pretty well. But the obvious thing you're going to notice, because it is brown, obviously the colors are going to be a little bit different. They're going to be a little bit dull. I tried adding another layer, but even so, the colors just kind of, they're a little bit dull. There was no bleed through. There was just some wrinkling, some warping. The paint also bled a little bit through the paper fibers. Right after painting, some of the dry, chalky pigment did rub off on my fingers. But other than that, watercolor definitely works on craft paper, too. Now, I also decided to do an experiment with layering. So, watercolor paper can take multiple layers really well, so I also wanted to try that on these regular papers. So, this is the printer paper. I painted five different layers of this blue color and rectangles. Um, the printer paper, again, it definitely peeled up. It bled through, it wrinkled. But it, it still looks fine. And then the cardstock here, it looks better, much better. So again, that's multiple layers of paint on top of one another, letting them dry in between. About the second layer that I painted on the cardstock, I started to notice it pilling slightly, but not nearly as bad as the printer paper. And just to compare, here's uh, the watercolor paper version in the middle. So again, watercolor paper is made to take layers well, so it did just fine here. It works well because that's what it's made for. So 
then what I did was I painted some landscapes on these different kinds of paper too. So this is cardstock paper, again the same cardstock paper. So I painted this simple mountain scene landscape with all these layers. Again, multiple layers in these paintings too. And the cardstock again did quite well. Just minimal amounts of pilling. Now here is the printer paper. And what I did with the printer paper was I stacked a couple sheets up because I knew that the paint bleeds through. So it did bleed through. It bled through slightly there on the second sheet as you can see kind of. And as I'm sure you can see, the layers here look very grainy on the printer paper. And again, that's just because the paper fibers are pilling up. It looks grainy, those mountain layers. That was the most noticeable thing to me about the printer paper, besides the obvious wrinkling. And another thing, I did another test and some of the dry pigment came off on my fingers. Now this is that kids art paper pad that I was using earlier. Again, it's slightly thicker than printer paper, but not as thick as cardstock. There it is compared to printer paper, so it works better than printer paper for sure. So it worked pretty well. Those cheap kids art pads, it was, it said it was like multi-purpose. It was just a little bit of pilling, um, but it didn't bleed through. Out of all these regular papers I tried, cardstock is definitely the best. Here I also did the landscape on the Strathmore watercolor paper, which is thicker than any of these. And again, it took the layers fine. And it also didn't warp as badly as any of the other ones did. There it is compared to the printer paper, the thinnest of all of these. So the takeaway here is that if you don't have watercolor paper or if you're working with young kids or you just want to use cheap paper, you can use watercolor on regular paper. Obviously it won't work as well as watercolor paper because it's just not made for that, but it can work just fine. You can make it work for you by stacking up a couple sheets, maybe taping the paper down to a surface to help with warping. Use thicker paper if possible, so like at least 80 pounds, like a cardstock. Of course, it's best to use watercolor paper, especially for final pieces, but normal paper can work just fine for playing and practice and trying out ideas. So I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.